Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Uh, click the like button um, and please subscribe. It does help my channel out a lot. Um, all my subscribers, I just ate a cookie. <laughs> uh, they're awesome. Thank you so much. I'm so uh, happy with my subscribers. And um, we are waiting for some new ones to join us. Yes, we are. And you're more than welcome. Uh, I just did a video about the runoff coming on December the 6th between Herschel Walker and uh, Raphael Warnock. Yeah. So they're going to start facing off again in December 6th runoff. Yeah. With neither leading candidate securing over 50% of the vote in Georgia's Senate race, Incumbent Democrat Raphael Warnock and Republican challenger Herschel Walker will be facing off again in a December 6th runoff. This is the second time in two years that the fight for Georgia's Senate seats will be determined by a runoff election. In 2020, both Senate seats went into a runoff, which resulted in the Democrats retaking control of the Senate for the first time since 2015. This year, however, control of the uh, Senate is not at stake, as Democrats have already secured 50 seats in the upper chamber, holding the majority. When state election officials first announced the runoff on Wednesday, control of the Senate remained in limbo. But now with Republicans losing Arizona and Nevada, Senate control is no longer in doubt. But that doesn't make this runoff any less of an important win for Republicans. If the Senate remains... A 50-50 split. The committee assignments are also ev evenly split between Republicans and Democrats. Losing Georgia would hand the Democrats 51 seats, giving them majority representation on committees, meaning no more deadlock committee votes and a clear path for Joe Biden to appoint countless left-wing federal judges. Chuck Schumer Senate Majority PAC uh, wasted no time after the runoff was announced, dropping a $4 million ad by, by through Georgia Honor and group tied to the PAC. Georgia Honor <clears throat> began airing an ad on Saturday attacking Herschel Walker's character. The 30-second ad described Walker as unfit for office, calling him a liar with a long record of violence toward women. Now, I read that. I think I did a video on that two months ago. I, I was just beginning. I was new. Um, something about he ran over her foot, and she come on and told everybody about that, and uh, he had hit her or something like that. And uh, But then after that, you never heard another word. Not another word. So I'm not sure exactly what went on. Nobody knows, you know. But um, I like his common sense because he wants to bring us together and stop trying to divide us. So I kind of like that. We need that because over the past two years, they have been trying to divide us, something terrible, break us, and put us in such hazardous settings. Trying to start a war. Giving all of our tax money workers that have earned by billions. I can understand helping out a country in distress. But what about the people in the country that it's their money that you're sending everywhere else? And you know that your people, you're the president, more or less the father of these people, of this United States of America, you should look after them also. Oh, well. Meanwhile, Governor Brian Kemp, well, let me get back to this one now. Long record of violence toward women. I want to see the records. I want to see the proof. I want to see. I want to see how long he spent time in jail. 
When was he arrested? I want to I want to read the testimony of the victims. That's the only way that you get to the truth. It's through the proof. The documents. Now you know what them, them documents they took from Trump. Have you still heard anything about them yet? Where's the proof? Uh, <clears throat> sometimes I think, you know, why are you doing this, Betty? Uh, I like the questions, I guess. And <laughs> I sit back, hopefully waiting for the answers. <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh my goodness. Meanwhile, Governor Brian Kemp, who defeated Stacey Abrams easily, 53.4% to 45.8%, will be hitting the campaign trail with Walker as early as this week. Kemp also agreed to share his ground data and analytics operation analytics operation, including door knocking and phone banking, with Mitch McConnell's Senate leadership fund to help promote Walker. Walker also hauled in over $3 million in donations on the first day of the runoff campaign. It's a short video, but this will be interesting to see how this comes out. Very interesting. Well, let's go find another article and we'll wait for December 6th, I guess. Uh, here's one I ran across. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. This one right here. I don't think I have did this one. I'm trying to get everything off my desktop so I can rebuild it back up again <laughs> over the next few days. But I'll do most of it tonight before I go to bed. Then it'll be all ready for me. <laughs> oh boy. Liz Cheney melted down after Mike Pence told her these three words. And I've not read this one. I don't know if it's a long one, a short one, or in between one. I have no idea. Rhino Liz Cheney thought that she finally had Donald Trump. I did one video and, and I did say something that she almost sounds like a woman scorned in a love affair. Don't she? I don't know. She was hit with a nasty surprise that she never saw coming. And Liz Cheney mailed it down after Mike Pence told her these three words. The clock is ticking on Rhino Representative Liz Cheney, Republican of Wyoming, career in Congress after Wyoming voters overwhelmingly rejected her in the state's Republican congressional primary. You reap what you sow. Representative Cheney is obsessed with trying to use Democrats' sham of January 6th committee to take down former President Donald Trump during her waning, W-A-N-I-N-G, waning days in Congress. I always think of that as uh, wine. Would you like a little wine with your wine? <laughs> Former Vice President Mike Pence has fallen out with Trump over his role in handling the cer cer certificate. Here we go again. Certification of the Electoral College vote after the 2020 presidential election. Certification. Uh, with a frosty relationship between Trump and Pence, Democrats hoped that would open the door to Pence testifying before the January 6th committee. Earlier this year, Pence left the door open to testifying before the January 6th committee. If there was an invitation to participate, I would consider it, Pence said. Pence would have been in the highest profile figure from the Trump administration to testify before Democrats' partisan witch hunt. Now, during an interview with CBS News, Pence has told host Margaret Brennan that he's closing the door or on testifying before the January 6th committee. So he's shutting the door on it. Representative Cheney and her Democrat friends on the committee hopes that Pence's testimony would produce a bombshell, revelation to damage Trump's third presidential bid. They will pull out all to do anything they can. Now, if Pence knows something, then he better open up his mouth 
He better get in court, and he better let everybody know what he knows that he don't want to talk about now. Am I weird? Am I really weird? I don't get a lot of this stuff. I love reading it and handing it out, you know, to listeners. I enjoy that part. But boy... I go to bed at night and I just shake my head. But Congress has no right to my testimony, Pence told CBS. We have a separation of powers under the Constitution of the United States. And I believe it would establish a terrible precedent for the Congress to summon a Vice President of the United States to speak about deliberations that took place at the White House. He better come out. If he knows something, come out with it. He's not going to be able to live with it. You can't live with stuff like that. That will eat him up in the long run. Pence said Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi's Democratic California committee was a political show trial, but didn't dismiss the idea of further investigations into January 6th. Yeah, she was part of it. If you've seen my videos and if you've read these articles, Trump asked her to contact the National Guards three days before January 6th. He said, I've got a gut feeling like I want them here just in case. What'd she do? Just like last night in a video, I go, she flipped it off. She flipped it off. But I must say again, the partisan nature of the January 6th committee has been a disappointment to me, Pence said. It seems to me in the beginning there was an opportunity to examine every aspect of what happened on January 6th and to do so more in the spirit of the 9-11 Commission, nonpartisan, nonpolitical, and that was an opportunity lost. Now, you got to think from your heart. The ones that stand up for Trump, and even the ones that don't, take a second look. Now, he spoke some words out of his mouth. We all do that. We're all human. But do we know if that person that heard it is going to act on it? I'd have to have some uh, clarification, wouldn't you? I've asked to see. I want them for all of us to see the phone records. Now, if this was planned, if Trump had anything to do with it, there must have been phone calls to the leader of this crowd that ganged up on the White House Maybe there was a few emails, messages, faxes. Where's the frickin' proof that Trump had something to do with it? Now, I use that frickin' word, not the other word. And I have to apologize, though, because I listened to a video. Uh, was it last night? I think it was. I was a little bit upset again about something. And when I play it back to me, it sounds like I'm saying the naughty word. And I'm not. It's just, it's just a slang word called frickin'. Uh, you know, but I'm going to try to refrain from even saying that word. But I get upset over this because there is no proof that I have totally seen. And believe me, I do research. Oh, yes. I go to bed dreaming about it. Because I want, if people are going to accuse people of stuff of such magnitude, I want to see the proof. I almost said that word again. Remember, watch what you say. My motto is no words. When I want to say something, I'm better off if I just back up. And say no words. I have no words.
But this is going to keep going on and on and on. Anything but no seen, heard, proof. I want the proof. Mm. Top aides to Pence, like his former chief of staff, Mark Short, legal counsel Greg Jacob, have already testified before the January 6th committee. They have? I didn't see it. Wasn't it posted on the news channels? I check all the news channels. If anybody has heard, of course, I always say leave me a comment, and I don't get any comments, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Maybe I wouldn't want them if I saw them. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. But I didn't, I didn't hear nothing about that. Top aides to Pence, like his former chief of staff, Mark Short, and legal counsel Greg Jacob have already testified before the January 6th committee. Okay, but I would appreciate if any of you saw it, heard it, you know, let me know. I'm going to come back to that because I'm going to write that. I will look for that. I am going to look for that. I never stood in the way of senior members of my team cooperating with the committee and testifying, Pence said. Pence's decision to stonewall the January 6th committee comes amidst growing speculation that he's going to challenge his former boss for the Republican presidential nomination. He spoke at the annual Republican Jewish Coalitions of 2022 leadership meeting with other potential presidential hopefuls like Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Testifying before the January 6th committee would have been the end of Pence's potential long-shot presidential bid. Aha, uh -huh, there it is. That's why he's backing off. Oh, one of my babies are growling or something in their sleep. Probably dreaming. <laughs> Testifying, uh, getting upset over me hollering probably. Testifying before the January 6th committee would have been the end of Pence's potential long-shot presidential bid. Mike Pence refusing to testify in one last humiliating defeat for Liz Cheney as her time in Congress finally comes to a close. Stay tuned to Conservative Underground News for any updates on this ongoing story. Hmm. Okay. I'll be back. Bless you.